morning. I'm Janice Landry Lane. I work for IBM Worldwide Technical Computing. I have taken the responsibility of looking after something that IBM has taken as a, an initiative company-wide, and that is called genomics medicine. I think we've all lived in an era where we're beginning to read articles where genomics is actually saving lives. But dealing with genomics really is dealing with high-performance computing. So we started in about late 2010, and we decided that we needed to look at what we call the genomics pipeline. We needed to look from what the sequencer was sending and the IT that was needed to support this. What we discovered was many, many steps of high-performance computing and a very difficult workflow that needed to be done. And I'm just going to take just a second and kind of talk to this uh, aspect of what we've been doing first. It sits right here. It's called the Genomics Hub. We start with the raw sequence data coming off the sequencer, and we have to distill that, as we would kind of talk about this, through the pipeline, and we have to really get down to variant calling. This is an example of reference-based mapping for the human genome. And what we found here is that it, these applications, and there, there's a series of both independent software vendors as well as open source. A lot of these applications are in the open source community. And we really needed to take time and to optimize those. What we found is that some were not especially well written in terms of being, you know, computer savvy. They were really written for the algorithm that, that sat uh, beneath uh, the data. And so what we found on many of them were IO bottlenecks. We spent a long time analyzing uh, the situation and we spent a long time optimizing for this workflow. The first thing that we've achieved is with some of the open source, uh, with 30 times coverage of a reference human genome, we're talking about doing this in about an hour for the mapping portion. We had been talking to customers who were trying to do the mapping in days. The second thing that we talk about is getting all the way through this whole BCL FASTQ, all of this to, to what we call variants at the end, which is a much smaller file size. And what we find there is that uh, th these applications on the whole uh, need to be brought together with a very tight and, if possible, self-documenting workflow. The reason I say that is genomic medicine right now has been spent a lot of its time in research, but the value of genomic medicine is bringing it to the clinical. So we've paid a lot of attention. We've used our best practices in high performance computing to actually bring all of this together. We've had some pretty remarkable results. We really need to be a great partner. IBM cannot do this alone. We, need, we partner with CLC Bio, we partner with Accelerus, we partner with Recombinant by Deloitte up here. We partner with many folks and we are looking and we're in the middle of actually establishing more partnerships. The other thing that we find that is critical is data management. We have heard anywhere from the fact that once you do a whole reference genome of a human, that data, especially in the clinical environment, needs to be kept for the life of the patient. You cannot afford to keep this on spinning disk. We need to t think about in terms of hierarchical storage management. And when I talk about hierarchical storage management, I am talking not only about moving it from, you know, potentially flash to SAS to SATA, but also tape. Tape is a tier of storage. It is your long-term archive. So we have integrated across using our GPFS file system, and we have brought this all to be within the realm of what the researcher can retrieve. The most important thing is that he looks at his files, he said, I need this file, it is 10 years old, but I need to potentially recreate this result. And we have planned for that by integrating with, I, I'm gonna call it tier four, and that is tape, very well integrated into our solution. It's been very important to bring this type of value to this environment, and uh, not only the high performance to get the workload done, 
get the workflow done, but also the data management aspect of the genomics pipeline. But the genomics pipeline in and of itself is not valuable. The value lies when we do genotypic, phenotypic integration, where we look at content analytics to support the, the an analysis that we are finding within the data. So there is a, a whole translational hub, and I'm going to call this translational medicine. This is very important. We cannot sit alone. And the real question is, can this sit on a common architecture? I don't want an architecture for this, copy to this, move it over to here. This would be very bad for our customers. Let's simplify that architecture if we can. So what we really are depicting on this slide, and I don't want to get in it, into it too much, is number one, you're going to save anywhere between one and three terabytes per genome per patient. You're going to have to save this potentially over the life of the patient, and this is going to always be used in the analytics. And then ultimately, out at this end, is where we're looking for similarities. We're looking for personalized medicine. But a lot of the analysis has got to be done before we can do that type of association. I have this patient. I need to understand what the best course of treatment is for this disease based on the knowledge that was derived from the translational medicine. So we looked at this from an STG, IBM Systems and Technology Group point of view, and we said, do we have a common architecture that it can support all the way from genomics, and I don't care if it's genomics, I don't care if it's cellular imaging, equally as large, I don't care if it's proteomics, there's many applications that will feed this and be an ingestion point. But we are, try we are building the, and trying to exercise a common architecture sitting below. We think this is where the value lies for our customer. So we use things such as Tivoli Storage Manager, Linear Tape File System, and High Performance Storage Subsystem. These are the systems where we integrate from the file system onto the tape media. Very important. We also are worried about bit errors. I certainly want my genome on the tape in long-term archive, and I want it to be absolutely correct. So we look at the, the ways of increasing the productivity and, and actually building workflows, and these bring in our platform products. Another slide uses Platform Process Manager. Platform Process Manager is key in, as an industrial tool to build the workflow in the Genomics Hub. So what we've tried to do is build not only uh, the hardware platforms, but integrate them with what we all affectionately call middleware. Thank you.